Um, yeah, it's a very nice audience. It's also my former school where I was um, very proud to be able to teach. And um, um, don't get shocked by the overwhelming of images, but um, I think I have to show the complexity with which we have to deal because we are architects and uh, we are nothing else. And, um, and we try to find a way throughout uh, our praxis and uh, also within this uh, new contemporary uh, space situation and also the new contemporary economics. So being an architect means you have to get commission and first of all you have to be yourself and that's us. Mario Peintner, Richard Scheich, Anne Katrin Fleit, Peter Zoder and myself. We come from different <coughs> parts of Europe and what it may be something um, familiar with us, we come from mixed cultural um, situations, so we are collective, that means we have to negotiate with each other, we have different and different imaginary um, and uh, we have to talk. Um, space and what's the world and what is social space is one of the most um, striking elements and as we discussed already yesterday, the 60s uh, were one of these moments in history where a lot of things changed and people from big questions made small tools and we are really um, yeah, thankful to all this generation like Stuart Brand with the whole Earth catalog to give a, a possibility to understand what you can do as an individual and we are architects, it means we producing houses um, um, and we producing um, relations it means we have to get commissions and uh, as we have three ways of getting things. One is self-initiated, which started from very small things to become now very um, big operations where we try to find allies on site. The second one is be invited by cultural institutions to be on site, but the, the biggest part we have to deal with is to get commissions. And that means right now, it means mainly if you want, want to work with the public to win competitions. And um, the Trojan horse I, I, I used to uh, use as a metaphor is, 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 is the, the way we try to, to work within this kind of system. Get in and trying to expand the agenda or trying to completely convert the situation of production. This was a, a, a competition we won for a winery to North Italy. And as soon we were in the commission, the nice thing was this is a, a collective um, um, company of 240 farmers and uh, they just wanted a showroom but we were able to, to develop as soon as we have won the competition a complete cultural program with which they now are dealing and trying to invite um, um, writers and uh, artists and, and they developed a whole kind of an art program after we were able to deal with this kind of situation. Obviously the typical question, I, I will not go deeper, it's just to show the parallelity of that what we are dealing with, different kind of timetables is a kindergarten in the Alps. For us, the most striking element was um, how to face the condition um, of um, the way right now public work um, has to deal with. That means that you have an anonymous client which is the public and uh, you are part of an anonymous system of 200 competing for one public work. And uh, that's completely opposite as we are normally um, used to work. We normally are getting in contact uh, with somebody and uh, in, in that moment the things are expanding, things are exploding. And uh, this is really one of the biggest um, um, problems um, I think architecture has to face now that the public itself um, has a kind of a, a brief uh, which is the only way of communicating with the outside and um, you have to respond to that. And how could you expand it? Um, also, the, the role cultural institutions are giving to you, this is an exhibition we made for Ludwig Forum Aachen, um, it's a little bit the same and also there we always try to, to transform the brief in something else. This should be just an exhibition design but then we were able to to create uh, an, an installation of interaction uh, with, with, a, with a kind of a big media room. This was a, a, a project we did in, in public space of Vienna uh, in front of the um, um, Arbeiterkammer, the house of the, 
the workers' cooperation, um, a kind of a, um, a possibility to, to create um, facilities which could um, generate um, a kind of a multiplicity of, of layers. Um, one of the most important things um, right now is housing, and, um, and housing faces the same problem. It's one of the most atypical um, 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 situations that uh, on one hand it's the most personal way of um, dealing with space and on the other hand it's the most organized way how, how people are put in within a system. And this was the first time we were able to convert the system and making a, a, a participatory project um, with possibility of choices within a small village in northern Italy and where we really were able to, to transform social housing into something completely else, also by the dealing uh, with the territory, the, the green you see is the roof of, of, of houses. We were able to transform the agenda of the row houses in something else, but mainly we were able to, to create um, a vision of that what the public space within uh, this kind of collective housing could be, by, by, by moderating, by convincing, by uh, giving them an issue and, and, and finding figures of responsi responsibility. And going, yeah, until creating this kind of big social agenda with social houses where you don't have, um, where you don't even know the client. So we have to face a multiplicity um, of, um, of, um, of, of possible ways of living. But, um, and also here, how could you? transform um, um, the agenda in something else. And I, I will go specifically to some, to four projects where we see it in kind of, uh, this kind of deepness. This is um, a project we did for Cologne and it was um, called the Bildungslandschaft Altstadt Nord. And it was the first time that in Germany there was, um, after the, the disastrous uh, PISA study, um, that uh, the big question arised, how could the, the space of education be reorganized? How could you find a way that uh, really from a bottom-up of the pedagogical space um, um, a kind of a city planning could evolve? And uh, in the Bildungslandschaft, I said not, we had to deal with a, a, a very um, uh, interesting uh, place situation within Cologne, where there were um, seven institutions and uh, we had completely different interests and we were, uh, this was a European-wide competition which we won and where we were able to find uh, strategies of moderation between these seven uh, spheres of power and the main idea was um, how could you reorganize space and time and in, in really physically in, in, in places so that uh, you, you could create a kind of a, a system which could be the starting point for the development also of the, um, of the neighborhood situation. And an enormous amount of moderation, we had to deal with 70 different kind of um, interests and we had to do with an incredible enormity of spaces. This is how the space we dealt with. And the question was, uh, city monetary has never money. But how could you share these spaces? How could you find a way of logistic? How could you use this kind of maximum that the seven institutions, but also the citizens of the neighborhood, could really use it? And, and how could this then become um, the absurdity of a plan? And how could you, from, from then the bureaucratic level of a master plan, bring it again back to that what it, in, uh, it, was, it was initiated as a bottom-up um, uh, phenomenon? And this is something which goes on and right now it has been leg 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 legislative and uh, the big question is now will this time be able to bring it back to the level where we started? Obviously shrinking is, is, is a big discourse, this is a project we initiated in the Netherlands um, where we tried to find a way to, uh, to create freedom within um, a specific situation of um, houses which um, are, are put down, and how could, uh, how could you find a way in a very regulated um, public space as the Netherlands to create um, freedom? And if, it, if, if the regulation dominates the outside, maybe you find possibility for the inside. And then we worked with, within a neighborhood 
and transformed um, um, one of these, these uh, semi-lift um, um, blocks in something else. This is the classical tentative to, to use um, the, the kind of strategies as it was something else. This was um, a project we did for the um, big coming public space of a city which will arise. Um, as you know, Vienna is one of the few cities which has still growth. And um, there will be a new city of 40,000 people in the north of Vienna called Aspen Seestadt. And there was a, a European-wide competition of um, creating a, a manual for public space. But uh, the most striking element was that uh, nobody wanted to go to this kind of city and uh, there was no way that people would ever go there. And uh, we made it together with Peter Alt, a sociologist um, of, of, uh, of Linz. And uh, the, the main question was how could we create um, a neighborhood where we would like to go, where we would like to go and, and create, a, create a kind of a, um, ecology and uh, sociotope um, of, of, of a creative cluster and uh, made a master plan for a city which could also fail and made a master plan uh, for pioneers. Normally you have all this concept of Zwischennutzung in cities and in, in spatial structures where there is already some built environment so it's very cheap to enter there with the software of the artist and to transform it. But we wanted to know could you use all these kind of informal tactics, the, the, the tactics of, of land keeping to create a, a very specific condition for a, a city to be. And uh, cre creating a master plan in a way which allows you to have uh, pioneers being there, have possible winners which might be integrated within the city, but really to, to like, like China when they created the special economy zone, that you don't create a special economy zone, but is that, that you create a special cultural zone where you, uh, you, you create a highly attractive ground um, for pioneers um, to, to go to a city which has, to be, which has still to become. But um, all this kind of uh, reflection obviously um, re remain that what they are in terms of they're really depending on the, on the power system and uh, therefore one of the most important things for us is to be also very specific on site and on, on, and on, 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 on specific projects, and which I will show now. Uh, this was a, a, a project for um, a festival center in Styria, Steirische Herbst. And Styria is a, in the Steirische Herbst is a contemporary art festival. That means it comes every year and it's, it's changing places, it's changing it's, um, uh, main centers. And um, temporary architecture is always producing something very spectacular, but it has also a backstory, in the, and that what has been produced sometimes becomes trash. And that what we wanted to do is uh, to rent something and to create space within the system um, um, of our contemporary production by renting 2,000 euro palettes and creating this kind of uh, contemporary open space we have invited artists which already worked with this kind of um, design and uh, by creating also a public sphere. We, want, we, we changed the brief and uh, transformed it into an open agora and a forum where the, the daily life and the everyday could as well, um, be, uh, as well happen as the, 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 the spectacular moments of the performance and of the, the very specific moments of the arts. So that was really important, how, how, you, how could you create a public ground? How could you find a way um, to, to, to use the brief for a building and to create a kind of a, um, a, a, yeah, a public square? Right now you still have the, the machinery of the bananas there. I will switch to this one because I think it's um, a little bit late already. This was just a homage we did um, about this kind of in informal um, elements and about uh, our way um, to get people involved during the Biennale of Sao Paulo, where one of the most um, yeah, uh, striking elements was for us, how could, you, how could we use the tactics people are dealing with in their, their daily life um, for, a, for another way of communicating and using architecture. 
how could regulations be part um, of our deal, how could the, the making visible of um, regulation being part of our practice. And this was uh, one of uh, the first projects we did, it was a, um, a little survival kit for traffic jams, where we wanted to explore the possibilities of communication within this frozen moment in time, the traffic jam, by giving the people tools, very banal tools, everyday objects, which could help you to break the barrier between these kind of car situations. Obviously being on site, the moment of truth, and uh, parallelly uh, reactivation of spaces which have been dominated by another logic, this was Toronto Barbecue, um, a project we did in the, in the center of Vienna, uh, activating for 10 days um, a, a ground which was never used before by just giving, not creating an event, but just giving a density of tools and um, or a, a, a temporary architecture which has to do with um, with a narrative and, uh, and the finding out of space. This was a collective march we did uh, in the borderline between Slovenia, Austria and um, Italy where we tried with the community of, of people um, of uh, which were once living there um, to re refound their traces and made a, a kind of a big um, um, walk to the mountains for four hours to arrive on these forgotten places where we built together a kind of a memory machine, uh, a kind of a black box which was nothing else than a come obscura which is now remaining in this kind of square. And um, to be on site um, obviously has to uh, means to listen to the uh, logics on site, but um, uh, sometimes the voices uh, we hear are also the voices of power and how could we give um, um, also possibilities for those who don't speak and um, how could we create a system where uh, possibilities arise. This was a very specific invitation for a, a bus station a bus stop, not even a bus station, a ridiculous small amount of budget, but also a very small town which we had to deal with. And uh, it, it, it was financed um, by Public Art um, Lower Austria, and it's a very interesting kind of pot where um, elements, <coughs> where money which is normally defined for um, art on buildings is put together in um, uh, in, a, in a big pot and given to people for bigger projects and um, within public space which are on the crossover of the disciplines. And we wanted to create um, an, uh, um, an object which was not just an object anymore but should uh, create possibilities. And uh, when we were on site we were asking people with what they had to deal with and so we found the biggest wish on site for this little, little town was just to park, which was completely absurd, it was the only public space in the, within the neighborhood. And, uh, and that was, and, and on the other side, um, we hear that somebody wanted this public space become something more attractive, etc. But uh, we tried to be very, um, yeah, sympathetic about that and uh, have given them past off. And we wanted to create um, um, a public space where we, where we um, created a space of negotiation. We made a, a public square where they could park everything, but every third of this parking space has a different function. So you have really to know the system. If you're a foreigner, you would never dare to park on a spot which is a playground. And, or if, but the people on site with the trackers or with the Porsche Cayenne would really go through this kind of little water basin. So it's, it's constantly um, a choice. If it's, if it, is it public ground or is it just um, a parking space? And uh, parallelly we were able to create uh, the bus stop in such a way that also other activities are possible, um, theater plays, the choir, the choir is singing um, on Christmas on the rooftop, and uh, but but just by adding this kind of system, creating just plots which is which are ready to park, um, but by adding other elements, right now it's really used in a complete other way, 
and nobody right now is parking in this kind of system. And that was the most um, um, striking element about, about the whole process, that you have, we are given them what they want, but in the end, with this kind of tiny transformation, we were really able to, to achieve uh, this kind of hidden agenda of creating really a public square. And then now jump to the last one, because I have to run, as Lucas already told me. I switch on the last images of a little fisher city, Shenzhen, in 1980. Right now, to another project, I have just to jump this one. This was a, um, a tentative to create tools um, for public space in the city of Shenzhen, where we transformed um, um, little tree bikes into, into something else, into, uh, into new tools for a public space which should not just be for dealing and trading, but um, should also be, um, uh, give a, a bigger possibility. This is a speaker's corner, this was a pub, urban boxing, public karaoke. And I switched directly to the last one, which in a certain way resembles all I've said before. Project for London, I'm sorry to run out. So, here we are. Last project, uh, in the middle of, in the south of Italy. And uh, this is a project which resembles a little bit um, all our um, all our agenda within one project. We were invited to be on site for one month uh, in the middle of the Apennine. We had an enormous budget of 10,000 euros and uh, we had uh, to work with people on site but we uh, should focus on the agenda of identity so we were in the end completely free. Um, but we should, uh, what was our agenda was to use the whole economy on site to produce the project. So the site is, um, is a little part uh, next to Napoli, in the region, mount, in the, uh, in the region of uh, Campania and next to uh, the old kind of tradeways um, of the ancient cultures. But right now they are completely out of everything, shrinking villages in the middle of nowhere. And we have been focusing on one of these little villages, Prata Sanita, which suffered an incredible um, amount um, in the last century because of, of, of migration. So the big migration routes have been in the 20s, then to Latin America, North America, England, etc. And in the 50s with the invention of um, industrialization to the north of Italy, to Switzerland, um, uh, to Germany. And this kind of transformation of the territory obviously created um, a, a double kind of system of ruins. One side, the ruin on site, the, the, the people left spaces, but then with this kind of first using of the money, the first production of, um, of the first houses in the hope to get back. But obviously the people didn't get back because the children have become Swiss citizens with Swiss identities. So you have a kind of a double situation. We went on site, but we found an extremely cosmopolitan area incredibly connected with the rest of the world. This is one of the, uh, the villages, Latino, 700 people living on site, but 700 people still in connection with, with other families abroad. Gala Matez had 5,000 inhabitants in 1960, now it has 800, but the New York community alone is um, every 15th of August is having a big party of 1,500 original Galesi in New York. So we found an, a landscape of poorness on one side and of incredible richness and history on the other side. These were the classical biographies. Five years Switzerland, 40 years in Germany. He spoke with me in Schwäbisch dialect. I didn't understand one word, but uh, you always have to try to be confident and to, yeah, because respect is one of the, 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 the biggest topics there. Mario Yanni, which has a biography like a top manager. Uh, switching between Rhode Island and um, Prata Sanita, but just being in this kind of little um, village. So we had to deal with a kind of incredible complexity of, of, of a web generating um, uh, connection with the outside world. And parallelly to that, in a distance of 100 kilometers, you have a black economy of 32 milliard euros of the Camorra. And this kind of parallelity of the worlds um, created a very specific situation that nobody wanted to be in the range of this big um, city. 
Then to understand Italy, you have also to understand how social space um, is, uh, is organized. At the age of 25, 50% of Italian women still live by their parents' home, and surprise, 70% of Italian men are cooked by mama. And um, this leads, obviously, to a very specific phenomenon that you have a lot of free spaces, but that uh, there is just um, a very small percentage of rental housing in Italy, um, a very, very strange phenomena arising up. So if you want to have sex in southern Italy, as a young man, you have to have a car. And uh, parallelly, the transformation of landscape and the cultural landscape to um, television was inevitable. This is the, 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 the transmission where with, with Berlusconi changed the idea how women should behave. And mass tourism obviously dominated Italy, created a situation where the, the tiny rooms which are not discovered could have a chance. Shrinking was not just put by Philip Oswald on the map. And new kind of global ways of transport, cheap ways, um, make all these regions now reachable. So these were the phenomena we had. Uh, a presence of very strong elements on one side and then an absence of others. This is Prata Sanita, which is a town like Rudowski described it in Architecture Without Architects, an incredible, beautiful area, half abandoned, half lived. When I was shooting these photos, I did not imagine that this was actually the site which, which we were dealing with. We were coming to the site and had just a concept. So everything you will see now, there was never a plan for this. But we were able, like the, the jokers on the medieval um, court, to, to go within the system and, and, and change it. And by using also their forces, um, giving them idea, creating commitment and creating allies. The density in the 20s, in an in a area which was dominated by analphabetism until the 50s, was enormous, but all these people left. So this meant also that private space has become public space. These have been taken also by the municipality. And we have a, a village which is divided into two. We have Prata Sanita in Fayore, with the map system of its road, which is already the dream of a situationist. And you have the newer town, newer, and uh, <coughs> with the joke newer, it's 150 years old, and it's dominated by the paradigm of the horses. What was our idea? Our idea was to create a hotel, but not a hotel um, for, as an economical idea, but as a, as a tool of communication. How do we bring people from outside to the village? How do we try, try to get them in contact with all the young people inside? And the hotel is nothing else than an assembly of a lot of cells put together to a, to a bigger one. So <clears throat> we discovered with them, we made a map of the diffuse hotel about the qualities of the village itself, because they have also to think always about this kind of strange relation they have to, with this place, because for them it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a space of loss and also of not self-confident with the classical problem between the north and the south of Italy, the south always feeling like a loser. <coughs> but we wanted to, because we were really surprised about beauty, we wanted to, to transform it and use the whole economy of the little shops, of the little um, uh, bars, to be part of this kind of hotel. We had a lot of struggling and discussing with them and had, um, they were telling us we would have eight workers, but at the end we had 60 workers between the age of 20, 24, but most of them were between 60 and 87, which were working for us for one month. It was like this horror movie situation, don't open that door, because behind every door there was the horror. And when, when we tried to use this kind of low yeah, this absurd idea of having 10,000 euros and trying to build a hotel by using the simplest of means, trying to convert situations with pharaonical ways of approaching mass transportation. And obviously, by being constantly with them, the community shaped. And throughout this kind of building, um, we really built a kind of a community itself. This is one of the first rooms we created, the, the gray space. And then we went on and uh, created a bathroom, which would here also a very important moment for Italian community defining La Squadra as always the t-shirt. No? So we produced everything on site parallelly, also to create this kind of um, idea of community. And the bathroom itself um, was also a reflection about the idea of um, shame. And we used one of the most banal elements on site, this was La Moschiera, which uh, is good to bring away the flies and transform it. 
Yeah? Like a little bit more. Okay, and, and three minutes. <laughs> and uh, the bathroom itself was um, also a reflection about this kind of uh, condition on site and be transformed into a completely other element. And um, this was the bathroom with the view from the shower to the, the place where you clean your teeth. And we calculated the, uh, the working hours, we made the last room, and then it was finished. There were a little more. Hotel in 24 days, this was the flying bed. Where you fly out over the village, you are over it, and you have this kind of very specific situation. And then we created um, a kind of association, and now it's run by them. And um, they, as we didn't have any money, we were invited back the ne next year and we created them <coughs> as a public space where the first cinema was happening. And um, throughout um, advertisement, mouse-to-mouse -mouse propaganda, and curators we sent on site <coughs> telling us if it was worth to write about it, um, the, 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 the voice was spreading and people came to this place. They pay as much as they want and uh, I told the the major, if I once have told him that um, he would be on a cover of, of places to see next to Osaka, Abu, Abu Dhabi, Barcelona, New York, he would put me, put me directly into kind of the into the madhouse. But it worked, and right now we are using the invitation of the insta uh, of uh, installation in the Max in Rome to uh, to we have created with the community the public library, which is now part of the installation, and in ten days we'll move back to Prata Sanita and be there, a new bed at the new library. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Richard. Sorry for pushing, it's always tough for the time. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was um, a beautiful connection of kind of the beginning with these more classical architectural projects to these very self-driven and artistic projects that you are able to really cross um, combine these two, two aspects in your work, which um, keeps a very playful element in it. And I also like you, uh, you could record this talk, the Tro Trojan horses and other social animals, um, the idea of the hidden agenda. So it's interesting because the Trojan horses, let's say, the, the metaphor that is um, you're basically inviting a foe into, your, into a protected space, um, and it's a confidence trick. And on the other hand, the social animal, which is an animal capable of social interaction or of a certain level of social organization. And I think your projects very much show this, this in-between that you're dealing with. But um, maybe you can elaborate again on the, on, the, on the... That's actually a strategy, and you're coming back to this or two, and tactics, like the first projects are more strategic, whereas the other ones are more tactical in that sense again, but on this kind of hidden agenda in your work. That's what we we believe in, um, not in neutral space. We always wanted to expand possibilities. We believe that um, there is. Um, we want to offer something where people can, uh, where it opens possibilities, like in this kind of bus station, where you take a normal brief and you add a, another kind of agenda which opens the fantasy, but opens also the possibility of of, of using this kind of space in a, in a in a in another way that it. That it reconnects to that what a, what a public um, a sphere could be a, pub, a, a place of discussion, a place of interaction, a place of negotiation mainly, and that's one of the uh, that we want uh, to put things also in a friction. We want um, yeah we don't believe in the kleinsten gemeinsamen Ganze. Uh, we we believe in um, very specific. Um, situation, but in the overlapping of very specific situation, so that everybody creates, that you find a comfort zone, but then there is already this kind of borderline where you can switch into something else which is new for you. And that's something which we always try to do, and therefore this kind of, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the metaphor of the, of the Trojan horse is really also that, that um, we try to take every brief in a certain way as a series, and obviously we are yeah, as everybody, we have, we have also to deal with necessity, necessities. But um, I think the, the most important element for us is really how could we uh, get also back to the analog, <coughs> to the physical space. How could we get, um, yeah, uh, to something which reconnects us again with places, with sites. And I think um, we started our projects 
in 2002, when the whole um, architecture world was full of blobs. And uh, I think this was also our, our wish to go back to the dirt and to the ugly and to the stinky reality. And, uh, but, but, but to find a way to, yeah, to offer a platform where you could interfere, interconnect at something. Mm -hmm. I think this, this friction you keep wonderful in the projects, there's like multiplicity of friction, which was also a big topic yesterday. More questions from the audience at this point. If not, then I would say we take a 15 minute break and we'll slightly over time, but we'll, we'll manage with a 15 minute break. There's coffee, there's cigarette outside, and see you in